All right. Today we're putting together a Skidoo 850 turbo engine that someone else had taken apart. They ended up finding a locked up crankshaft bearing on the clutch side. It was so locked up that we had to replace the crankshaft as well. You can see on the left there, the brand new crankshaft. That bearing closest to us is the one that was locked up. Here I'm torquing down a uh, the motor's upside down, but the top of the motor right now is uh, underneath that is coolant right, where they try and keep the crankshaft and all that stuff down there cool. Putting some fresh pistons in. Um, on this job, we're also replacing the cylinders. As you can see, they are very shiny compared to the bottom. There was some damage to the old ones as well. I am measuring piston protrusion. Uh, these E-Techs run different thickness uh, base gaskets underneath the cylinder to uh, basically set their compression. Um, and the spec I had looked up for this machine, this year machine, was not right. Uh, I actually had to look up an older machine because I was not able to get the piston protrusion within spec. I looked up the old spec, um, measured it, put in the right gasket, and As you can see, we're already on to intake boots and torquing down the cylinder head. Here I am cleaning the exhaust valves, make sure they're all shiny and new. These E-Techs tend to stay pretty clean get all gooey and carboned up. And as I'm torquing this cover down, I'm cycling the valves to make sure they're cycling okay, nice and smooth, because if they don't reach their intended position in time, they'll throw a code. putting on the stator and the flywheel. The throttle body and the mess of engine harness goes back on the motor. One of these valves wasn't moving in, in and out very nicely, so I had to take it back apart and figure out why. Later you'll see they use a, uh, there's a bar that ties the two together and there's a single cable that pulls them in and out. So 
even if one's working fine, the other one will drag the good one behind and throw a code. There's the tie bar I was talking about. There's a sensor that sits underneath it. Tells the computer what position it's in. to line up the one on the right hand side and then that plate I just put in is the the front and rear of this side engine mount kind of a pain to get it all lined up back together the oil pump connected to the bottom of it. You can see right above the crankshaft sticking out there. Your boxes are Pretty crammed in there, pretty frustrating at times getting them back in and out for that matter. Here I'm hooking up all the specific oil lines. There are, uh, should be four. Since this is a turbo, one of the oil lines actually tees off and goes up to uh, feed the turbo as well. You so saw I just stuck in the tuned pipe. You can see a sensor hanging out the top of it right there. Uh, these tuned pipes have, because this is a boost, uh, they have a exhaust temp, exhaust temp sensor as well as a back pressure sensor. Here you can see, I like to tip the front of the machine up, uh, especially the big uh, coolers in the tunnel. Uh, it really helps get all the air bubbles out. Here I got the computer hooked up. I am running the oil pump multiple times, get all the air out of the oil lines, uh, as well as making sure the oil line to the turbocharger is fed. put the top back on because the gauge is there we'll get it pushed outside and actually run it make sure it runs and revs up a little bit get a little bit of heat into a brand new engine like that we'll let it cool down again check all the fluids make sure all the coolant 
you know, work some air bubbles out. And then what I usually do is um, I'll go out and run it, make sure it actually revs up. We didn't have any snow at this time, otherwise I would take it for a little test drive and make sure everything is good to go. Well, that's it for this one. We'll see you next time.